Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Omni Viewer, and welcome back to Non Moving Pictures, where we examine movie posters as art. I don't know if I've actually clarified this yet, but the art of actually making a movie poster can be really difficult. After all, you've got to capture the entire essence and tone of a feature length film with a single image. Sometimes it's easy. If you've got a main character, or you've got a particular major event, that could sometimes work as a good jumping off point. But what if your movie is just this side of indescribable? Something that's difficult to summarize even when you're talking about it in a proper review. What if your movie is something like Ralph Bakshi's Wizards? I am not exaggerating when I say that Ralph Bakshi's Wizards is one of the strangest movies ever made in the history of cinema. Regardless of age or gender demographic, and regardless of whether you're talking about live action or animation, Wizards is a movie comparable only to itself. Even if I were to do a full-blown in-depth review one day, which who knows, I just might, I still would only wind up telling you that you have to see the movie for yourself in order to truly understand how bizarre it really is. And indeed, I highly recommend that you see it. I don't know if you'll like it or not, but at the very least, you will know what I'm talking about. But again, that raises the question of how do you summarize such a bizarre movie with a single image? Well, this is the poster they wound up going with. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking. This doesn't necessarily look like the sort of image you'd associate with a movie called Wizards. So the big question is, why did they go with it? Why go with this instead of, maybe, an image of one of the actual wizards from the movie? Well, that's certainly a very good question, and I can only speculate on the answer. So, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can figure out, just by looking at it, why this was selected as the image to represent wizards. First of all, let us draw our attention to this fellow. Okay, so for those of you who have not seen the movie, I'll try to make this as straightforward as possible. When the movie starts, this character is called Necron 99, a cyborg assassin employed by the bad guy. However, after a certain point early in the film, he falls in with the good guys and is renamed Peace. And don't worry, none of that counts as a spoiler. Now, Necron slash Peace isn't exactly a main character, although to say much more than that would be a spoiler, but I think I know why he was chosen above the others to be put on the poster. There are two reasons which come to mind. Reason number one, he's the first name character we encounter in the film, and the one we follow for the first few minutes. And make no mistake, he leaves quite an impression. Reason number two, of all the characters who appear in Wizards, he is the most visually distinct. There's no other character in the movie that looks quite like him. Even if there are a few characters in the background who do look sort of like him, only Necron slash Peace is red. Much like Darth Vader, his is an instantly recognizable silhouette. Well, maybe not quite as globally recognizable as Darth Vader since Wizards is more of a cult film than Star Wars, but even so, this is a character you would be able to pick out in a crowd, no matter what. Then there's the rather bizarre creature he's riding upon. Now the choice to include this creature, I don't know if they actually were given names in the movie, makes a bit more sense because there are a lot of them throughout the film. They basically serve the same function as horses, and they are ridden by both good guys and bad guys. Obviously, you can tell this one is evil thanks to his red scowling eyes and his dripping fangs. But there's another reason this steed was included on the poster. Suppose you had no prior knowledge of what Wizards was about. You could look at Necron slash Peace and think, well, he might be a cyborg, he might be an alien, or he might be a regular guy in a red jumpsuit. Whichever you think he looks more like would inform what you think the movie is about. However, there's no ambiguity regarding this creature. It is clearly not normal. However, it doesn't necessarily look alien, does it? I mean, yeah, it looks weird, but it doesn't really look like it comes from space or something. 
Everything in the image points toward it serving the same function as a horse. It's just a weird looking horse with chicken legs. Thus, we know whatever we're dealing with, it's not set in a normal world. It would be, for all intents and purposes, a fantasy world. Then there's that skull on the ground. Now, the skull tells us quite a bit about the movie's tone. We know it's going to be very dark and will probably deal quite a bit with death. It's surrounded by flies and there appears to be blood on the ground, which means this guy died recently. And this tells us there's going to be some violence in the film. Then we can take the skull and juxtapose it with the tiny little patch of ground that serves as the only bit of terrain in the whole image. Thanks to the cracks at the top and the sandy colors towards the bottom, our minds are able to fill in the blanks and presume that if we could see the rest of the terrain, it would be a wasteland. And indeed, that's a big part of the movie. Speaking of which, the choice to not have a background on this poster might seem kind of weird at first. Yet even that adds to the image, I believe. After all, it's not just a stark white background, it looks kind of like paper. In fact, when taken as a whole, this poster, at least to my eyes, looks like the cover of a fantasy novel. And indeed, if you watch the movie, one of the first things we see is the camera zooming towards a book. So as it turns out, the storybook aspect is on full display here. Now make no mistake, even this image cannot possibly prepare you for the strangeness of the movie itself. And yet, this image is so striking and so unusual that it immediately piques the viewer's curiosity. At the very least, they'll want to see the movie just so they can figure out what it is they're looking at here. So in that sense, it does exactly what a movie poster is supposed to do and entice the audience. Now, word on the street is that Ralph Bakshi will be making a sequel to Wizards very soon. What movie poster will they come up with to represent that film? Time will only tell. Was it an unconventional choice? Absolutely. Is it the best choice they could have gone with? I don't know. Like I said, Wizards is not an easy film to describe, so... Maybe this was the best they could have done. Either way, it's an image that's lasted and is now completely associated with wizards. I guess that counts for something. Until such time as we meet again, this is the Omni Viewer, signing off. Next time, another Godzilla poster. This time, a fairly recent one.